Hey everybody, Steve Bergen here, and we're going to take a look at some of the Google word processing features we've not yet covered. We've covered a lot, but we've never talked about tables. Okay, so when you want to make a table, and I'll make some room for a table here, you're going to go up to where it says table, and you're going to insert a table, and after you choose insert, you can come over and I'm going to make it be a tic-tac-toe board three by three. You just stretch to where you want to pull to. So maybe I want three by three or maybe I want four by two. And then you click. And now you have what are called cells of that table. And in those cells of those table, you can put down whatever you want for each cell. And each cell can be lined up and format it in its own way. So if I click on 2013 and I choose center, it centers that one. Or I can highlight all three of those and choose center and it would center all three at the same time. If I go up to the table feature and I choose table properties, I can make the background color of a cell be a certain specific color and I also can align, and you'll see that in a second, I can align the stuff in the cell to be smaller or bigger. So I'll make a smaller font size. You should know that 72 pixels make an inch, but you may not. So this is 12 pixels, which is a sixth of an inch. So in 2013, we have a pretty good Google Drive product, but it will get much better in 2014. That's just what happens, right? Much better in terms of features of the software. So again, I can click on the cell and I can go up to table and go to table properties and I can change the cell background color to be something different. I can choose the vertical alignment to be center, and that will make the word pretty good GD be in the center from top to bottom. Now, of course, I could click in it, and I can also go center align, and now it makes it be centered from left to right. Any word that you have, whether it's in a table or not, can be hyperlinked. So I click on that, and then I choose insert link, and then I can tell it to um, go to summercore.com and apply. And now that word would be hyperlinked. I also could double click a word, go to link, and I could type in a topic like binary. And now it will go to various links on there. And I can just choose one. And so you can hyperlink different cells, which is very effective. You can also insert pictures into cells. So if I come over here and I choose insert a image, if I know the direct URL, I can put it in here. If I know the URL of an image, or if I go to search, um, I can put in Red Sox, because my fingers are crossed that we're gonna win the World Series. And did I do that right? Search, search for maybe, okay, I may have to settle for red socks. There we go. We found red socks the old fashioned way. And so I will click that and choose select. And now I will have that image coming into a cell. So tables are very useful and you have the features in tables of highlighting columns and you can insert rows above columns left or right right lots of features and tables now when it comes to formatting and you've seen a previous video on formatting so that you need to know that you can in fact you can in fact change the left margin right margin and the first line 
but there are things that we don't have yet in tables, in formatting, sorry, that are in Microsoft Word. In other words, we have the ability to insert tabs. So I can come over here and I can put in tabs by clicking up top and I'll click up top and I'll add a left tab stop and that will be AAA -A -A. and I'll come over to 3.5 and add a center tab stop and now when I type BBB -B -B, it actually keeps it linked by the center of that portion. But there are other things that we don't have in Google Drive, Google Docs, with tabs and margin markers that involve decimal tabs or leader tabs. So I, but that's what I mean about they'll be there in 2014 or 2015 because the product just gets better and better. If you want that challenge one more time with tabs, that challenge is, let's get to a blank area down here, is to be able to do something. This time I'll do it in three columns for variety. I, I want to have something here in which I say to my students, do December 1st, and now I'm going to click a tab, and I'll add a left tab stop. I press the tab button, and I'll say easy and now I press tab again and now I type my text and then I program the paragraph so that the right marker is a little bit in but most importantly the left margin what I sometimes call the horse the horses are going to be over at two and three quarters and the cowboy is going to be over at zero. So that format now would allow me to have the next paragraph of do 12 2 tab once and it jumps to the place where I have that tab and I'll say hard and then I go jump tab and I will have my paragraph. So the sign of a pretty skilled good word processing user is that he or she doesn't press spacebar repeatedly to go to the next column and he or she uses tabs to do work that looks like this and you can see up there that I set a left that's the cowboy I let a tab at about an inch and three quarters and then I set the left margin marker at two and three quarters and that format then stays there until you change it. So now we're going to say change. And now I'm going to get rid of this tab and throw it away. I'm going to get this margin and I'm going to, I'm going to bring the left tab stop over here, the, what I call the cowboy. And then I'm going to take the horse and back to here and now I'm back to normal. Okay, let's see what else is the next thing I want to do in this quick review session. You can have tables, formatting, links. Okay, under the topic of formatting, we have the painter, which is right over there next to 100%. So if I have a cool format, like tables, and it's going to be italicized, and it's going to be a certain color, it's going to have a highlight color of yellow, and it's going to have a text color of purple. And if I want that format to be moved to another location like links, I can click once in tables, click the paintbrush, and then I can apply it by going to links and releasing. Again, click once in tables, click once on the paintbrush, go to the word translation and highlight it and you can do multiple words by double clicking on the paintbrush. So I can double click on tables, highlight it, I can now go click click on paint format, click click and now I can make 
the word table be that way, and I can make the word contents be that way, because I've turned it into that mode. So formatting has many aspects to it, and that's one using the paintbrush. What else? I'm going to show you table of contents and translation in a different document in a second. And we have the ability to insert images. We've been through that. You can get images either um, by the URL or taking a picture with your camera if you have a camera on your computer or uploading it from your computer. Or, of course, by searching and typing in whatever you want to type in and the images come up. Under insert, you also have the ability to put in footnotes, add special characters. Let's talk about page numbers. And let's also talk about page count. So in the top of every page, if you want to, in what's called the header area, you can have a page number. So if I go and I choose header, I'm now on the top of every page. I can choose center so it's in the middle, right? I can type it and call it SB Notes, put in the symbol, and then I could say page, and now I could insert page number. And now the page number will be the whoops, the top of that particular page and the top of all subsequent pages. GD, Google Drive, doesn't have the feature yet to put in a different page for different sections because we haven't gotten to sections yet, but it will probably by 2014 or 2015 as GD catches up with Microsoft Word. What else? We can come here, and this is, as you know, and it keeps annoying me, the fact that it's a bulleted list. So when you have words, AAA, BBB, CCC, DDD, you can highlight all those words, and then you can turn on a bulleted list, or you can turn on a numeric list. It doesn't have all the outlining types that Microsoft Word has, but eventually it will catch up and it will do that. Let me see what else. Um, we have the ability to do a page count. So in a few seconds, it will tell me that we have page count. It will tell me that we have certain number of words on this page, certain number of characters on this page and I'm not sure why it's being particularly buggy right now. Um, we have table of contents, and I'm going to deal with that in a different document. We have lots and lots of formatting options. If you go to list options, you can actually have different kinds of bullets in your paragraph styles. So if you don't want to have these bullets, you can go to format, bulleted list, and you can have it looking a little funkier in that way. Same thing with numbered list, one, two, you can have format, numbered list, and you can have it be with, with um, different kinds of things for table of contents so that that would be A, and that would be B. All right? Um, word count. I think that's what I was confused about. Word count is what, what you want to do if you want to get the number of pages and the number of words and characters in your document. Sorry about that. I think I got confused between word count and page count. Page count is just um, your you are inserting page count so I could have a line here that said um, this document this document 
has, and if I go insert page count, it says three pages. Okay, you can move things to the top of the next page by having a page break. So I'm going to take this and get out of that mode so it's not going to be formatted that way. And now I'm going to go insert and I'm going to go page break. And now that moves to that page. And now this document has four pages, so it's been moved there. Okay, so we have to deal with translations, right? I think I can translate the silly document now, and we have to deal with um, table of contents. To deal with translations, I am going to um, go to the feature that says translate, and I can choose translate type the language that I want. It won't alter this document. It will not alter this document. What it will do is create a brand new document and the brand new document will have the translation of this document to the extent that it can find intelligible words that can be translated. So this is a separate document from the original document and you'll find that under tools. In terms of table of contents, you generate a table of contents by having um, different areas of your word processing document tagged with a heading. So I'm going to switch you to a different document here. Okay, so I've got a different document and we're going to deal with the table of contents right now. So you actually recognize this document because it's our wiki that has information in it. Okay, Anywhere you want an item, I'm going to choose concatenate to be a table of contents item. What you're going to do is you're going to format that with a certain paragraph style called heading 1. You're going to apply heading 1 to the word concatenate and that's the identification to the system that this is going to be in the table of contents. Okay, as I go down here I'm just going to make up some stuff and I'm going to take edit site layout. I highlight it, I format paragraph style and yes there are shortcuts heading 1. So heading 1 which is a certain size that you either have defined or need to define is going to be the heading that puts things in the table of contents. I'll go to Google Sites. By the way, in case you didn't know this, you can highlight a bunch of stuff like this or you can click once and do shift click at the rear end and shift means through. I'll go format. I will go paragraph styles and I will go heading one. Okay, once I do that, slight internet problem, sorry. And we go down. Then when I insert the table of contents, all the items that have been marked that way, and Columbus Day already was marked that way, and Team 1 was marked that way. So anytime you mark it with heading 1, then you come back up, and then at this point, you say, I want to insert a table of contents. So right over here, maybe in that space, I'm going to go insert table of contents. And what it does is it takes all the items that were marked like concatenate, and it puts them to, into this top section. This little wheel just means that when you make a change you may need to update it. So I'll come to absolute reference and I'll highlight that. I'll do it the other way. You should know the double click highlights a word but the shift click trick means click once before it and then go to the rear end and hold down shift and click and that means through. Shift click to mean through 
and now I will go format and I will go paragraph style heading one apply heading one and if I go back up to the table of contents it doesn't show it but if I come here and I go update five four three two one it's there all right so I hope this has been of help and this is a review of a few topics we've covered but many of them are some things that I've realized I've not covered in the last few weeks of this course so I hope this is useful Steve Bergen signing off bye